So apparently you can't get pantyhose and you can't get tape and you can't get socks. This is this, but you can get, you can get bubble gum. That is uh, David Freiheit, who uh, is a litigator turned YouTuber uh, with his popular Viva Fry vlog, uh, talking about what many Quebecers are talking about as we start 2021. Many people scratching their heads or voicing frustrations about what they're allowed to shop for or not, and the arbitrariness about what is deemed essential. And of course, uh, David has a platform with his uh, YouTube channel, Viva Fry, and uh, you've uh, made a couple of posts about this very issue. Good morning, David. Good morning, Tracy. How's it going? It's going great. So tell me, so what is it about this that uh, you've gone on the airways with your YouTube channel, not once, but twice, to tackle this issue? What is at its heart for you problematic? Well, uh, there's a number of things about the way things are going that are problematic in my mind in general. But the most, uh, say, the most shocking in my mind is the government's ability or perceived ability to, on the one hand, shut down what they call non-essential business over Christmas uh, in what is undoubtedly going to be an extended time frame from the original announced one, much like the two weeks lockdown has turned into a year. But the, the, the arbitrariness of it with, with, is one thing, and the unjustness or the, the injustice of it as relates to certain businesses. But even you know, getting into the essential businesses that are allowed to remain open, I thought it was a joke when people were saying they're not allowed selling non-essential items because I had a big enough problem making a distinction between essential and non-essential businesses. I couldn't determine between essential and non-essential items in one store. And so I go firsthand to the pharmacy and literally they have saran wrap on half an aisle covering, I think it was hair coloring, uh, socks and some tape. And then they had it on batteries, which I thought was preposterous especially in winter for anybody who has ever experienced a powder, power outage. It's, it's just, it's willy-nilly. It's, 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 it's like just doing things for the sake of doing things so the government can say, look, we're doing things. Yeah, you know, you mentioned tape. I was, uh, I was sort of searching around uh, last night on uh, Twitter and various, and there was somebody talking about how they had gone to Dollarama. They had recently moved and they went to buy tape. Now, it was not blocked off by the, the saran wrap or the plastic covering that you talk about, which I've experienced as well when I've gone out shopping. But when they got to the cash, cash register, when they went to pass it, it said non-essential. Uh, that's what came up, I guess, on the, on the cash register. So they were not able to buy tape at a dollarama. So um, you're a lawyer, a litigator, uh, you know, you, 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 a litigator turned YouTuber, I think is how you describe yourself on, on your YouTube channel. Um, so, you know, wh- what is the sort of legal implication of all of this? I mean, what, how, how can you sort of help us as, as consumers well, understand this decision? I can't help you understand it because there's nothing to understand. It's it's nonsensical. And in the justification, the minister in one of the articles I was reading, you know, said interpretation is good because they don't want to send an exhaustive list that ex- un, you know unjustly or wrongly excludes certain items. And no, especially when they have the power to issue fines if they so choose. Ambiguity in the law is never a good thing. It invalidates a law. It renders it. You know, on the one hand, unenforceable, unconstitutional, or whatever. When people don't know what the law is, it is no law whatsoever. When it can apply to anybody and nobody, and at the sole discretion of the law enforcer, it's generally not a valid law. And ambiguity in interpretation is a weakness, not a strength. Yeah, but- you know, we're getting a lot of textures right now, uh, David, and I'm sure that's why you're probably getting a good response to your YouTube video as well, which, by the way, is what we heard off the top. You went shopping <laughs> with your uh, child on your shoulders uh, trying to determine what is essential and what is not. But I'm getting a lot of text here saying winter boots, uh, you know, uh, they were not able to buy. Uh, somebody talking about how they were not a, a woman, uh, his wife was not able to buy uh, diapers um, at one store that they went to, um, you know, I'm seeing all kinds of saran no, no, wrap. But, but it's, it's even worse. We're not allowed buying saran wrap tape and batteries while our elected officials are flying off to Bermuda, St. Bart's, Bahamas to vacation. It's, it is in your face, over the top, uh, unjustifiable governance. You know, it's interesting, David. Sorry, I was listening to you speak about that ambiguity because um, 
I think that is the issue, even with respect, you, you, you brought it up with respect to these politicians is because it wasn't an enforceable law. It was a recommendation. And that's where things get tricky, isn't it? Well, recommendations get tricky indeed when the recommendations become law in no time at all, as we saw with, uh, as we've seen in the context of this, of of the of the response to this pandemic, recommendations become become law. But what what's there is there is no point in giving a guidance on a recommendation that is ambiguous that creates an obligation and a sense of fear in everybody where nobody knows what to do, and it's not the distinction between essential and non-essential over Christmas time can only lead to one thing, and it's not good. And coupled together with everything else we see, it just looks like the government has no idea what it's doing and is, like, throwing darts and saying, okay, well, this, this looks like the good course of action today. Uh, and, by the way, we're not doing it for ourselves either. So what can a person do? Because, I'm see- again, the texts are coming in like crazy. Is somebody saying, and I can't verify this because it, it didn't happen to me, but a texter is saying you can buy paint at Home Depot but only white paint. Um, and somebody's asking the question, barbecue chips are essential but a birthday card isn't. You know, and there's there's so many of My these wife- kinds. My wife sent a picture of uh, the, the birthday card section taped off. It's nice. The, 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 the holy polloi citizenry can't buy birthday cards, but you know, the, the government elite can fly away for vacations and, and, and birthday parties. It's, there, I, you can never, you'll never be able to verify all of the texts you get. It's like I get them in the comment section as well. Uh, you can see photo evidence, but you always need context. But when you see it with your own eyes, Nothing about it can make sense. I mean, it's. And what can a consumer do uh, from a from a legal perspective? Is there anything we can do about this? Well, there is. So, as, well, from what I understand, I did get an email, and I've seen the lawsuit. There is a grouping of small businesses which have filed a lawsuit in Quebec to uh, to fight against what the, you know the perceived unconstitutionality of these measures. I'm going to do a, a video on it sooner than later, but I couldn't do it over over the holidays. But no, it's been banned together and. Either, you know, on the one hand, there is a way to contest these fines, which are issued on, on similarly ambiguous provisions. And at the end of the day, it's, it is going to have to be something that's resolved either by way of the vote in the next elections or through the courts to declare these unconstitutional. The problem is going to be damage will be done. It'll be on for the next crisis for the government to uh, uphold these rules. Right. But the courts, the courts are going to have to get involved at some point. So, you know, you always have to represent all voices that we're getting. We just did get a text saying, you know, we can't buy what we want, a lot of whining for nothing. What do you respond to that? That is a slippery slope to where we are. I mean, and that, and that, is, the, that is the passive just surrendering to absolute uh, arbitrary governance, which is not what government is supposed to be. And it's, it's, it is basically just abandoning to unconstitutional government as though we have no fundamental civil rights of our own that the government can overnight during Christmas shut down businesses and tell us what we can and cannot buy for ourselves. It's not, if, you, if, if a person wants to resign themselves to that type of government, uh, there, there are other countries uh, that are probably more suitable. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, though, because I did say off the top of the show today, um, you know, it, it, putting ourselves in a politician's shoes right now when you're dealing with, I know unprecedented is one of the banned words we're not supposed to use anymore, but in unprecedented times, you know, um, like this, uh, you know, it, it is really difficult, I think, to govern at a time like this. But I think ambiguity is is the problem. I think for me, you know, I'm seeing a few people sort of agree that you know we're whining about what we can't buy let's put things into bigger perspective but the problem is this was done to support local businesses but what it's really doing is uh supporting things like amazon well that's one thing but you know the people saying we're complaining about what we can and cannot buy that's a gross oversimplification people's businesses livelihoods and freedoms <coughs> excuse me are being stripped from them right now so it's not just a question of buying what you can. There are people who can't work. There are people who are who are who, who don't even know what to do with their lives in the next year. So this is not just a question of tape at Christmas. This is a question of where the, the government is taking us as a society. But the the ambiguity, you you this is not how a, a government can respond to something imposing rules which make no sense on their face, which the politicians themselves are clearly not following. Right. And so it's not it, unprecedented times does not mean. Uh, reactionary measures, just so that you can say, "Look what we did to try to respond." You know, that there's there's a good way to dedicate government energy and resources and regulation, and there's a bad way, and there's an effective way, and there's an ineffective way. And I don't think anybody is going to agree that 
banning a store which can remain open nonetheless from selling certain items is going to do anything to deal with the actual problem. And even the justification, like you said, is to help small businesses. Not, you're not helping small businesses by shutting them down, by letting the ones that stay open sell certain things, and by banning certain things with no relation to any sort of efficient or response. All you're doing is, in fact, crippling both of them to the benefit of Amazon and online retailers and, and, and big tech. David, what has been the reaction to your, uh, to your vlogs that you've posted on this issue? The, 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 the so the substantive ones, you know, I, I have a base who uh, follow me because they like my interpretations and they like my my angle. I always get some negative comments, but typically, but most people uh, I, I would say are even more uh, angry or express their anger more than I do. It's it's you know I, I sort of have to find humor in the fact that while I have to find humor in the fact that politicians are literally saying stay home for Christmas while they are in St. Bart's. I mean, I have to find humor in it, because otherwise you, you'll, you'll, it'll crush the soul. Um, but the response, you know, it's, it's 95% in some form of agreement. It's, it is a tough thing. You know, when, you're a govern, when you govern, you will always be making certain people unhappy. And so you can't govern on the basis of trying to please everybody. But you can govern in, on consistency, logic, and above all else, following your own rules, because when you don't follow your own rules, people begin to question whether or not they are actually justifiable rules in the first place. All right. I think, uh, you know what? Well said. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> David Freiheit is a litigator turned YouTuber, and you can uh, listen to David uh, on his vlog. It's Viva Fry, F-R-E-I. Uh, David, thanks so much for joining us this morning. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. All right.